I had to put in one more cast and uh, again with this water walker and another big cutthroat came up and ate it. Another good one. Beautiful, beautiful cutthroat. Where you go, thanks dude. Fish, took the dry. Nice, so I put on a, a water walker, a little mayfly and first drift through. This cutthroat came up and ate it. That is a spectacular backdrop and one of the reasons why I absolutely love coming to Yellowstone Teton Territory in Eastern Idaho. Coming up on this episode of The New Fly Fisher, we've got four weights and five weights in hand and we're on the make for cutthroat and hybrids. This big fish adventure starts right now on The New Fly Fisher. And I would usually walk away, but if I do, I'll fall off the top of the RV. Do, 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 do. Ooh, that's a nice sized fish. Absolutely fantastic. Good fish. The new fly fisher is supported by Visit Idaho. Yellowstone Teton Territory, Orvis Fly Fishing, Scientific Anglers, Trout Unlimited, WeatherTech Canada. Welcome back to Yellowstone Teton Territory in Eastern Idaho. We are continuing our RV adventure, exploring this fantastic part of America's West. Yellowstone Teton Territory is comprised of 7,500 square miles of wide open adventure. Getting to Yellowstone Teton Territory is quite easy from all US states and for the international traveler. I took the short flight from Denver, Colorado into Idaho Falls Regional Airport. Though the airport is small, it truly has an international feel to it. I mean, it's dead easy to get into and out of. After deplaning, I gathered my stuff and took a quick cab ride to get my RV rental. hit Highway 20 and started my adventure. Whether you're looking for guided angling opportunities on the big water, or if you're looking for an adventure on your own, walk and wade, YTT, Yellowstone Teton Territory, has the water and the space to do whatever you want in spades. It's October and we're here exploring small creeks and rivers in the area on the hunt for fish that are still looking up. Shoulder seasons are a great time to visit Eastern Idaho as many outdoor enthusiasts have put their rods away in preparation for other pursuits leading into winter. Basically, the angling pressure is nil and you can explore, often with entire systems to yourself. My first stop is a freestone creek in the hills known for a great population of Idaho state fish, the cutthroat trout. I hike upstream for about an hour and pick my first spot to begin. How do you like that? What a hike, man. To get off the beaten path on a small stream in Eastern Idaho and Yellowstone Teton territory is just fantastic. We didn't see anybody. We got the stream all to ourselves looking for cutthroat, maybe a kokanee salmon, and maybe some rainbow. Rigging up a five weight with a, uh, a hopper, and we're gonna go with a dry fly to start. A mayfly, uh, purple in color, see what we can come up with. We haven't been seeing some hoppers on our hike in, so maybe the hopper bite's still going on. Start with a dry, double dry system, see what we can come up with.
we've come up to this first pool. It's a deep pool that has a bunch of white water rolling into it, and then it gets quite deep in the middle here. Uh, I've got two dry flies on, a terrestrial and a mayfly. We're gonna try the mayfly first, and if nothing comes up for either terrestrial or the mayfly, I'm gonna put a Pertagon dropper on, uh, which is like a bullet head, uh, a bullet head nip. So, here goes. So a good question is where do you start fishing for these cutthroat when you come up to a pool? Personally, I like to fish them upstream with a long leader. I've got a 12 foot 3X leader with 3X tippet on it. And I can cast the terrestrial up into the pool without fear of having the line spook any of the fish. So I go a lot longer and a lot lighter and then I can work my way, start at the low end and work my way up into where the money, money hole is to uh, get these big cutthroat to come up and eat. Now we know there's good numbers of fish in here, of cutthroat, and we have reason to believe there's also good size. Nice cutthroat. And that's what this small stream fishing is all about, you know? Catching little nuggets like that, or gash under his throat. Looks like it could be a hybrid. Just a great little fish. Awesome stuff, great way to start the day. Another little guy. They seem to be hanging out at the tail of this pool and that green bullet's doing the trick. We'll get through some of these little guys and hopefully we'll get to dance with a big one. I mean, you cannot beat the colors on these fish. Look at that. Where you go, thanks dude. That seems to be the ticket, the Pertagon. They're not quite looking up yet, it's cold today. But you know what? You can come and play with these little cutthroat all day. <laughs> it's just so much fun. All right, I'll get this guy on button and I'll show you the fly we're using here. Nice one. Look at those slashes, spots, just fantastic. All right, let's look at the fly that is catching these great little cutthroat. It's called an olive bullet. It's got a bronzish looking head, a black throat, green body, and a small little tail. But the thing is, it's on a jig hook. Uh, the eye of the hook is at the bottom of the, of the head. Um, and it, it is, of course, barbless. This, uh, this fly is doing great. Always has proven to be a wonderful fly here in Idaho. Well, a couple, three fish out of the first pool, and there's miles of river to cover. So we're going to move on up and search of big ones, see what we can find. I love it. Fall time, there's nobody here. Fishing is amazing. I move on up to the next bend pool and fish a hopper and keep that deadly Pertagon as my dropper. The fish are starting to look up. Oh, there's a good fish. That's a big one. Came and ate the dry. my net. Like an idiot, I completely left my net behind. I got it now though, and it is game on. This cutty came up and ate the dry. What a thrill. Came up and ate the dry. Nice, so good. This is why you come and fish Yellowstone Teton territory in the fall for stud cutthroat, just like that. <laughs> so fun, 100% perfect. So what a great fish. That was absolutely fantastic. Um, and that was the first fish that we've had eat a dry today. Uh, and this is a fly that it ate. It's a, um, it's a small little ant type foam beetle uh, hopper looking thing. A little bit of a red tail, uh, purple underneath, under hackle. And that one didn't touch the Pertigan. It ate the dry. So hopefully this afternoon, it'll be dries all day long.
Well, how do you like that? We came up and fished this second pool here, and uh, right away I raised a cutthroat, and I couldn't get him to come back again. So we went up to pool three, messed around for a bit, and I decided that I'd come back down and hide behind this log, or this rock, sorry, and see if I could conceal myself and get this guy to come back and eat this dry. And sure enough, he did. It's a nice fish too, good cutthroat. Let's see if we can get this guy in the net here. Oh, just so fantastic. Ugh, get out of that current, buddy. So it's funny, this morning those, those little guys were eating the pertigons and we couldn't get any cutthroat to come up and eat, but now that it's later in the afternoon, got another one in the hole. So good. Okay, so let's take a look at this guy. Another great cutthroat. The Yellowstone Teton territory. Just amazing. Anytime you get cutthroat on dries, take it all day long. I'll fish a dry fly all day for one good eat versus Pertigan eats. There's nothing like seeing that slow sip come tight. It's game on. As the sun goes in and out of clouds, it's turning these fish on and off. When the sun's out, they eat dries. We haven't caught a fish on a Pertigan in a long time. But as soon as the sun comes out again, It's all about the dry fly, which is amazing for cutthroat. And it doesn't matter the size of them either. I mean, they're all just absolutely amazing. Look at the gash on that one. Just perfect. <laughs> A little splash. You can catch great numbers here. And there are big ones in the system. So take your time, pick apart every single pool, every seam, every riffle. There's tons of cutties in here and they're a ton of fun. After exploring the creek for a few hours, I decided to head back to where we started to see if I could coax any big cutthroat to eat a very bold offering. I actually played a real jerk move there and I decided it's the end of the day and I decided to throw in something really big and bold. A really large water walker. And this is the pool that we actually started in this morning. And this guy came up, typical cutthroat, super slow, just came up and inhaled this water walker. And what a way to end the day, what a fantastic fish. And I can still see some more in the pool. Oh, barely fits. Fish of the trip so far. Fish of the day. Oh my gosh, and to eat a water walker? Like a giant, like a six, maybe even a four. In the sunshine, look at that fish. It's as long as the net. Absolutely fantastic. Well, I thought that was the end of the day, but as you know, as anglers, it's never just one more cast. I had to put in one more cast, and uh, again with this water walker, and another big cutthroat came up and ate it. Another good one. Swim in the net. Beautiful, beautiful cutthroat. Well, the exploration day paid off, and this is only day one. Day two, and I decide to return to the same little creek to see some different water. Though it was the same creek, the weather conditions had changed dramatically from the day before. As I was driving in, a major storm system had settled on the area. This had me questioning a variety of things, such as water clarity, lack of sunlight, and what thunder and lightning might do to the fish, or even if I could fish at all. Arriving at the parking lot, I got rigged up and started my hike in. Then Mother Nature really let me have it. As you can see, 
Mother Nature has thrown us a curveball. A cold front has moved in and the pressure has dropped. <laughs> Welcome to the mountains. What does that do to feeding fish? A sudden drop in barometric pressure tends to have a negative effect on the metabolism of these fish. As the pressure drops, a physical reaction takes place where their swim bladder will expand to help keep them equalized to the pressure changes. Conversely, as the pressure rises, the swim bladder will shrink to accommodate. Either pressure change can be uncomfortable for the fish and turns them negative, meaning they may stop eating. This negativity can last a few days as well if pressures don't stabilize. That may have been the case for me, however. Something else is going on here. The changes in temperature seem to be enticing a foul weather insect hatch of some kind. I can't see what these fish are eating, but they have forgotten about their pressure issues and are going crazy. So regardless of your situation, I know one thing for sure. You have 0% chance of catching fish if you don't have flies in the water. So I'm gonna start at the head of this pool. There's a run that comes in between these two rocks. I figure that the dominant fish, the big fish, are gonna be there to intercept the food that's coming down first, probably with the smaller fish towards the end of the pool. So let's see what we can do. Fish, took the dry. Nice, so I put on a, a water walker and a, and a little, a little mayfly. And first drift through, this cutthroat came up and ate it. So you wanna answer the question as to what this pressure does for these cutthroat? It definitely turns them on. There's tons of fish surfacing in this pool right now. Keep him out of there, not to spook the others. There he is, beautiful little cutthroat. Look at that gash, just amazing. So in bad weather, don't give up, keep at it. There he goes. Got him. Oh, and it's a good one too. Oh, great fish. Again, on that little mayfly, get out of there. Keep him out of the wood. So one fish came up and looked at the hopper and another one came and ate the dry. Oh, this is so good. So you wanna answer the question about what happens when fish and the weather do not cooperate? <laughs> what an absolute stud cutthroat. So the sun came out and everything shut off. So I tied the hopper back on and put a blue quill, size 18 blue quill bullet on. And it was a success. I had one, I had one fish come up and actually look at the hopper. And as, as I watched that fish come up, the hopper went down. So set the hook. Hello, cutthroat. And this looks like a, look a, uh, it is, it's a, it's, a, it's a hybrid. You can see its red cheeks and the rainbow trout markings on its side. Get out of there, there's only six X on here. The dropper's only got six X. 3x liter to a 6x tippet, so you gotta let these little guys go if they wanna go. But that was the very next cast.
I know you're not supposed to do that tail first, but that was the opportunity I was given, so I took it. All right, so let me just unbutton this guy. Let him go, and I will show you the setup that I've got. Post-frontal fishing cutthroat. Thanks, buddy. Let me show you the setup I've got. Post-frontal cutthroat trout. 3X leader, 12 foot 3X leader to a big water walker. Water walker's been proven awesome last couple of days, so why change it? Um, so 3X leader down to 6X dropper tippet to probably a number 16 bullet quill. An olive with a flashback. There's the flashback. So it's got a brass head, jig style hook, and that green flash with olive wraps and a small little double tail. Well, all in all, I learned a lot fishing today. What you expect to happen and what actually goes down on the river can be two very different things. What an absolute gem of a day. I loved fishing that little creek in Yellowstone Teton territory and made the decision to further explore a similar sized creek in the area. Eastern Idaho is very fly fishing friendly with lots of public access to public water all over the territory. So I packed up the RV and went on another road trip in search of small water with big fish. I rig up my five weight and start a new day targeting cutthroat and hybrids. Today starts off very slow, but persistence pays off. So this guy was sitting in a back eddy here where two parts of this river meet. It started to braid out now that we're back into the foothills of the mountains. And this cutthroat came up and ate the water walker, a big fly, and it was typical cutthroat, just real slow, small sip, short sip. And it paid off. So he was sitting, I'll show you in a second, right where this fish was, in an area that had a back eddy in it, and he was sitting there waiting to ambush food. That's what he did when this fly came across. Great fish, hybrid, awesome, awesome stuff. Okay, so this is where that fish was holed up. I'll show you. So we've got the main creek coming down here on the right, and we've got a small braid coming in on the left, and right where those two meet, that's where that fish was, right there. One of the important things to do when you're fishing different currents at once is you have to eliminate the amount of line drag you have on the water. And that also includes your leader. So don't be afraid when you make that cast to really high stick your rod, get that line and leader off the water and it'll allow those terrestrials to drift in a natural, in a natural way. Um, sometimes you have to adjust for the wind, but uh, a high stick will up your chances of catching more cutthroat. 
More fish in general, actually. So this guy took the bullet and he was right in that back eddy behind that rock. Let's get him down into soft water. Nice cutthroat. That's for sure. You know, on slower days when the weather turns, you gotta put in your time and it'll pay off in spades. Oh my gosh, this thing is so fat. Tell me he hasn't been eating. <laughs> You're a pig. So as you see, there's a big boulder here at the start of this drop, and there's a big back eddy behind that boulder. Now the fish was not sitting in the back eddy, the fish was sitting on the right hand side near that white rock that's submerged in that seam. That fish was sitting right here. So when I cast up, I cast up above into the white water, and it came through the seam, the dry went under, set the hook and it was that big fat cutthroat. He's just sitting there chewing on food as it comes down. So, the seams on either sides of rocks are a great holding spot for trout. And it's a good one. <laughs> I knew this was a fishy spot. I absolutely knew it. We've got three braids of the river coming in, a deep pool, my first cast into the tail of the pool, and this guy came and ate it. He's not a giant, but on tough days, he'll play. Now you keep them at the tail because we still have the entire pool to fish and you don't want to spook all the other fish out of here. Come on bud, just right in that. You'll be good. Thank you. Keep him in a little deeper water. He ate the bullet that's suspended underneath that big terrestrial. Put your hands. Flies out. Nice. Just in the net here. Show you the fly. It's a, uh, a matte black headed bullet with a red collar on it. That's it right there. That did the trick. Now it's a Pertagon style, so it's a jig head. No barb. All right, let's take a look at this guy. He's got a very big head and a really slender body. Looks like he's had a bit of a war too. Spots are fantastic. It's a hybrid. You can see the yellow dots underneath on our jaw. It's a rainbow cutthroat cross. There we go. Ate it right off the top and I missed him. That was fun. That was a slew, super slow eat too. Maybe I won't change flies. There we go. On the bullet again. I just missed a really nice dry eat and uh, threw it right back in there. And I don't think this is the same fish because I pricked that dry eat fish. Um, and this guy ate the bullet. The dropper just gently went under. I got another cutthroat on. This is so fun. They really are a magical fish to catch on fly. And it's funny, you know, you know, oftentimes you think, you know, you, you put a fly through once or twice and nothing happens and you give up on it. But try a different angle, try a different 
speed, try, try to give it a twitch, just try some different things and often you can get them to get them to eat. Remember, this is barbell, so you want to keep them super tight. Just a beautiful trout. Come on, pal. Now, let's take a look from above and see why this pool has been so productive. Looking from above, you can see the obvious three branches of the river entering the pool. These branches provide turbulence in the water, which results in increased oxygen entering the pool. It also allows for three delivery avenues for food coming down the streams, be they bait fish, nymphs, or terrestrials. The pool itself is quite deep, allowing protection from birds of prey and space to move around. All in all, it's the perfect scenario to find, catch, and release cutthroat and hybrid trout. After a slower start, another super successful morning in YTT is in the books. Lunchtime. I want to talk a little bit about fishing upstream and fishing downstream. This is a perfect stretch that we can demonstrate both. Uh, both have their time and both have their place, um, but it really depends on number one, what you're comfortable with, what you're used to, and number two, the flies that you're actually throwing to, uh, to these cutthroat. I've got a big water walker on here. I'm going to tie a, um, a Pertagon bullet as a dropper to it. And with that, I'm going to actually walk down and fish up the pool, fish upstream. Then if I don't get anything, I'm going to switch my, uh, my fly setup. I'm going to put on a double wet fly. So swinging hackles, really soft hackles. And I'm going to swing downstream or put on a streamer. It depends. So I'm going to walk down, fish up, then I'm going to switch gears, turn around and fish downstream. A couple of things to keep in mind when you're fishing upstream are of utmost importance. Number one, be far enough off the edge of the river so that you're not spooking fish with either your fly rod or your person. Number two, when you're making your casts, make sure that your fly line is not going to be in a position to spook fish. So have your leader length long enough that you're able to effectively present that fly without lining them. And once you've started, in this case, from river right, as close as you can, working your way across to river left, and you don't move anything, or you don't see anything, or you don't see any rises, then you can either lengthen your cast and start again, or simply take a couple steps out. So now that I've put my dry dropper through this system and didn't move any fish, I'm still not convinced that there aren't fish here because it is cold and they may just be negative. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fish it downstream with a small streamer. So I'm gonna take this rig off, save that for later, grab a black bead-headed woolly bugger with a little bit of gold flash in it, tie it on. Now that I've got my woolly bugger tied on, I'm gonna walk up to the head and swing this pool fishing downstream. It's the same thing when swinging a pool. Start at 45 and let that fly dance across. Uh, in moving water like this, 
Oftentimes the fish will hook themselves because they will eat and turn. But if you do have to set the hook, a strip set is always best. Then you slowly work your way down the run, a little bit at a time. and wait for that trout to come up and eat. Nice. So one of the interesting things about where we are right now is that there's a big bend in this pool. And what's interesting is that a lot of the fish will lay on the inside seam of the bend uh, where the current is not as strong to, uh, to try to ambush any sort of bait coming through or food coming down. Now, that's what happened with this cutthroat is it was on the inside of the bend and it came up and ate this big terrestrial. It's a good fish. I was fishing the undercut of the bank here and um, I, I was surprised that nothing was coming out to eat it. But on the inside seam, that's where this nice cutthroat was. And he came out and ate. And this cold, I was just thinking to myself too, you know, the temperatures dropped significantly. And I wonder if that made these fish negative at all. Thank you, buddy. Swam right into the net. Ooh, nice fish. Take a look at this guy. So fishing upstream. That's the way to go. And this situation, I was able to, you know, we've been crossing the river back and forth, kicking some mud and silt up, which I'm sure has an effect on the clarity of the water. Um, but, you know, you fish upstream, keep the water clean, keep your leader and your, or sorry, keep your fly line out of the vision of the fish and you'll see success. Look at that. Oh, might be the best cutthroat of the stream. Good one. We've been watching this fish feed on this seam, on this rock, for a little while, and I've been throwing some dries at him. I couldn't get him to eat anything. So I switched back to the bullet. I put a small number 18 red brass head bullet on underneath the water walker. Second drift through, that's the ticket. Cutthroat in Idaho, you cannot beat it. That's a good one too. Get in the net. <laughs> Oh my gosh, it's gorgeous. Look at the gash on that, it's iridescent. Another hybrid. Well, that's about all the time we have on this episode of the new Fly Fisher. What a great few days in Yellowstone Teton territory fishing small rivers and creeks. Remember, adventure is out there. All you need to do is go and find it. And what better way than to do it with a fly rod in your hand? For more on our series, check us out on the web at www.thenewflyfisher.com. From all of us here at The New Fly Fisher, thanks for watching. My name is Mark Melnick, and hopefully we'll see you soon in Yellowstone, Teton Territory. The New Fly Fisher is supported by Visit Idaho, Yellowstone Teton Territory, Orvis Fly Fishing, Scientific Anglers, Trout Unlimited, WeatherTech Canada,